Ah, uh, welcome back, you beautiful souls. You're out here on S3, you're opening up, and we are live, and welcome back to another installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ching, ching, ching! Yes! Now, we are joined by one of our favorite chefs, the man, the myth, the legend, it's Chef Clem in the building, and he's here to solve your culinary conundrums. Now, if you've got any questions for Chef Clem, then you can call us right now on 21 555 It's as simple as that, and we'll be here to solve any conundrum that you have. Now, last week, we had Sean call in about a fried chicken and we promised we'd get back to him with his conundrum. So, Chef Clem, let's take it away, my man. Sean was asking mm -hmm. us how to prepare good fried chicken. The man is wanting us to come through and I know you are probably, when it comes to the hierarchy of fried chicken connoisseurs and makers, you're right up there, brother. I just love it. You are right just, up there, man. You're the king, de la king oh, when it wow, comes to oh, the chicken. Wow. So, we answered Sean's question on the phone, but I was like, you know what? Seeing how it's done means a lot more. Yes. So let's actually just break it down. Like we're going to break down the chicken. Nice. So, the first thing I do when it comes to fried chicken, if it's like a, a very last minute craving, I don't do the step I'm about to show you. But if you do do this step, it's like when you bite into the chicken, you hear the angels okay. on the little harps, they're singing. It's amazing. I want that. And it yes. makes a huge yes. difference and it costs you very, very, very little to get ultimate fried chicken. And that step is brining. Wow, so, so that's brining, the game changer step, it brining. Is, it is. Okay. So I've got some cold water in this pot over here, and brining happens basically with the salt that you use, right? It kind of removes, it, it adds excess moisture to the chicken, enhances flavor as well. But it adds excess moisture, so it actually adds weight. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna actually let you check it out in a little bit. Okay, okay. so okay. cold water, I'm gonna go in with salt. We've got some super fine salt. You can use any salt, just don't use the expensive flaked salt, okay? Okay. Because you don't need that, you just need salt. So the salt and you're really hoying it in there, eh? you're like three Look, tablespoons. It's gonna, it's gonna, remember this is gonna kind of like infuse the chicken. It's gonna, it's not gonna make it salty, but we will end up using less salt when we actually do season the chicken. All right. Work with me, work so with me. So if you guys are watching, obviously, expressoshow.com, we do also have that brine recipe if you guys are getting involved in this and uh, prefer to read rather than watch for me. I learned from seeing, so yeah. I'm paying a lot of attention to okay. this right now. Okay. So some sugar went in there, yes. some garlic goes in, because we're going to brine it, like I said, it's going to take on that excess moisture, that extra flavor. So if we can add extra things to it now, if we add garlic, the chicken's going to take on the flavor oh, of the garlic. Okay, so, so this is what gets absorbed. So whatever you throw into this little concoction exactly. of flavor and love is what the chicken's going to pull in. Yes, okay. so when it does a butter brine. Oh, so dang. that chicken oh, takes dang. on butter. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. So brining, I'm telling you, it's amazing. So what you're going to do now, get this on the heat. All you're going to do is you're going to keep on stirring it until all the sugar and the salt is dissolved. Then you're done. Okay. And what you have to do is let this cool down because you can't put hot liquid over chicken. You don't want to do that. You don't want to start cooking yeah, yeah, the chicken. Yeah, yeah. So what I do is I just add a whole lot of ice to it, bring the temperature down super quick. Is the ice not going to like uh, saturate or dilute the flavor? Or nah, no? it's fine. It's okay. Fine. It's going to drop down the temperature. You've got the quantity of salt in there. Make sure it's at least just below room temperature. Then you put your chicken in, right? Okay. What I do, I do overnight. And I made a roast, a roast chicken last night and I brined it the day before. Wow. Because I, okay. like, I was in the mood for it. I really yeah, wanted okay. it. Okay. So, Pick up this chicken and you're not gonna actually, you're gonna, you're gonna tell the difference without even comparing chicken one to chicken two. Okay, here we go. Just try this. This is unbrined, okay? Unbrined okay. chicken, okay. Pick up the, and like I know the plate's got some weight, but not a lot. Just pick up, pick up, pick up the chicken, pick up the chicken, pick up the chicken. No, 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 sorry, pick up the plate, pick up the plate, <laughs> pick up the plate. I don't know my what bad. To do with my bad. Picker. Pick up the plate. Wow, weird. You can kind of feel there's yeah. a lot more weight to it. And we know there's a lot more weight heavy, but, but like. There's a lot yeah. more. The chicken genuinely so has, takes has been on, brined. Already. That's been brined overnight. Ah, so it's okay. taken up all the flavors. It's been bathing in, in that It's been bathing. It's been delicious. It. Okay. So what that does is that stops your chicken from being dry. Okay. Right. Whether you're going to bry it now, whether you're going to roast it now, whether you're going to fry it now, it's going to retain so much more juiciness. It's going to be so insane. That step alone is going to save like 80% of the chicken attempting makers out there because dry chicken is like a proper thing that we're struggling it's with. It's a man. proper. It's yeah. a. It's a. Poultry crime. I mean, I was gonna even. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's wrong. Okay, so we've got our chicken, and now we can start the fried, the fried chicken recipe. So hot sauce is a really great one because hot sauce has all the spices, all the all the herbs in there. Everything's in there already, and it's a great way to add instant flavor. So get your brine chicken, and we've just portioned this. Get your brine chicken in there, and what we're gonna do is normally we add buttermilk. But in all honesty, I've shown people how to make buttermilk with just a little bit of lemon and a bit of milk. But yeah. if you like, if you don't have a lemon, could happen. 
just use milk. Just use milk. What it's going to do now is going to actually going to help you get that, that the glue in a sense that's going to help the flour stick to it. So, Ra, I'm going to pass this to you. Can you mix Whoa. the spices I'm into the flour for me? Right. I'm going to give you this. This is not the utensil you need, <laughs> but it's going to work. It's going to work. Okay. I like that. You've got no excuse when you're in the kitchen. You can always make a plan. No, exactly. So, I've got flour here, right? No shame. I feel really bad. Let me give you just at least this. I, I'd I'm use my others. Okay, no, you're going to no, use it. You're going to use it. Accept it. I'm going to okay. use this. All right. So, I've got garlic powder. Okay. And I've got. Cayenne pepper and paprika, just mix it too. I'm gonna add some salt. Salt is very important. You wanna layer every step that you go. Okay, okay. so I've got a very hot, spicy sauce in here. Yeah. Got a little bit of salt, but add a little more. Okay. Can I start checking this in the... We, oui, you can go. All right, all right. So a little bit of that milk goes in. And what I like to do is I like to let the chicken, it's got, got the, that flavor from the brine already. Yes. So I don't need to marinate it again. So give it five minutes in that hot sauce before you add the milk. And this magic step of brining is like a winner. You don't have to do much afterwards. If you hit that step correctly, yeah. you're pretty much in the end zone by the sounds of it. This is all just like cherry on the top when Absolutely. it comes to cooking, like making that crispiness, making Absolutely. that batter. Mm. So what I do at home is I've got a five liter ice cream container. So when I brine one chicken, Roasting one chicken for me is like, okay, cool, you know? But if you can roast two chickens, you know, chickens are so versatile. They become lunches, they become um, dinners again. Yeah, yeah. So many things, I always brine, brine two chickens and roast two. Or, so you know your I mean? kids one day are gonna open up the ice cream tubs and hope for ice cream and, oh no, it's curry, oh no. And then the secondary <laughs> business, Pedro's chicken oh, is gonna kick off, you know? Nice, I like that, okay. I like that. <laughs> so, we're gonna get, we've got, what do we got? We got drums, we've got some thighs, drums, got and we got some, some wings. Chicken wings. So here's the thing, this is the most important part I told Sean. When you get your chicken into your flour, make sure it gets a good coating of the flour. Get your hands in there as well, press it down. I'm supposed to be busy in the kitchen, so I'm not gonna do that now. Don't but make be sure shy. you get every single nook and cranny of the chicken. <laughs> but take it out the chicken, put it on the tray, and let it sit in that tray for five minutes. You want the moisture of the brine, of the marinade, to really absorb oh, that flour. So like another level of just yeah. drawing in some of that, exactly. gluing it together, binding it nicely. It makes all the difference. Okay. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit. I'm gonna fry it when we come back in part two. Oil's busy heating up, but do you wanna try some chicken? Oh, what, excuse can I, me? Can I also <laughs> phone a friend? Can I also phone a friend? Oh uh, yeah? Is Mr. Wasty available? Mr. Wasty, oh, no. he can't, he can't run. So I'm gonna eat on his behalf. I'm gonna, eat, oh, he actually no, he's like hell no. The chicken too. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna Love eat you. on. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna send him some just now. So this oh, is chicken that we've yes. literally gone through all the steps, brining, the properly that's sitting in the flour. All of that has happened, and you can see you got that beautiful. You can. It's also not an even like just a sheet of crumb. It's got little snaggly bits in one, that's texture. That's what the, the magic of fried chicken is. That little, every time and then you get like a good nugget of like that crispy crumb. Yes. You want that, you yes, want that. Okay, All so, right. thigh guy, wing guy, breast guy, where you at, drum I guy? To, I want that leg right the here, drum man, guy? that's the perfect top. Okay, I see the sauce, guys, let me finish this up. I see you got a crisp and a tang on every single it's piece. It's that same hot sauce that we used to marinate the chicken. We're actually just serving it on the side. Okay, so this is for you, Mr. Wasty. Yes. Because I know you're busy. I'm gonna just like. Yes, man. <laughs> That's it for mm. us here in the kitchen. We're gonna be right, right back at you with a part two. Keep calling that line. We'll be helping you with your conundrums. And uh, yeah, let's get eating, man. Mm. See you soon. <laughs> nice. It's my feel good birthday show. Uh, welcome back, you beautiful souls. We're live right here, opening up on S3, and it is that time again. It's the culinary hotline bling! Ching, ching, ching! <laughs> and we're joined once again by Chef Clem, our foodie panel expert, and he's helping us out with all the culinary conundrums that we got. And if you've got any questions, of course, call us right now. That's 21 552 And we're talking all things chicken, fried chicken, baked chicken, oven chicken. Chicken, chicken. <laughs> chicken, chicken, chicken. And we've got a question from Vincent all the way from Durban. Clem, this is a good one for you. He asks, when I make chicken in the oven, it comes out too dry. Now, I hope he was listening to our first part where yeah. we spoke about brining, right? And that was like a killer, killer step to kind of preventing this dryness, I, I exactly. imagine, yeah? Exactly. Um, what I also do is, I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna be roasting chicken, I brine the chicken. We did that step one. Then what I do is I spatchcock the chicken, which is basically butterfly the chicken open, and then I leave it in a nice, like a dish like this, in the fridge for about an hour. Okay. And what you'll notice is the skin will start going, will start losing a little bit of that glossiness and that moisture, some of the moisture will come out the skin. The enemy of crispiness is moisture. 
if you can take that moisture out the chicken skin, you're gonna get uh, banging chicken crispy. skin. Okay. Like literally, it is so good. So let's just quickly work on this really quickly. And I've got another recipe, but I've got cloths and everything, so we're gonna do this. Yeah. Salmonella is very important, guys. Also, preparation of your chicken. When you actually start off, but when you buy the chicken, make sure you're getting free range if you can, yes. and the better quality. So Woolworths, obviously, the excess fat is being trimmed. There's no routine hormones. It's it's the chicken you mm. want. Okay, so that's where it starts off. If your chicken's frozen, don't put it in water. Don't put it in anything. Let it just sit on the counter and come to temperature on its own. Its own don't, okay. Don't, don't ever put it in the microwave. A defrost function, you say it's a, a yeah. logo. <laughs> Zoe. Zoe, Zoe, the Zoe, Zoe, bro? No, <laughs> I know she doesn't do that. Okay, we're gonna smash cockroach chicken very quickly. So you can either just go straight to the backbone. Some people cut the backbone out, but I'm like, you paid for that excess meat. Why remove so much you. of it? So what you do is, I take the backbone and uh, chicken. Oh, by the way, this is the front. This is the breast. Yes. And this is the back. Yes. So grip the backbone, kind of tilt it until I see this like a little dimple, or we see there's like a little. You can see there's a kind of like separation there. Like a fold or a seam. What sits or below here yeah. are these two little jewel, the oysters. And those are so delicious and tender and you don't want to remove that because that is the best part of the chicken. But people end up like cutting through it and missing it. So don't do that. Then, okay, so you can see where I've gone. This doesn't take a lot of work and you don't even need the sharpest knife. It always work with a sharp knife in the kitchen. Just kind of remove that a little bit. Wow. And what I do is when I actually roast the chicken, I put this piece back. I put it in the tray as well. Chef snack. Okay, okay, I see some flavors, okay. some extra things. So now we, 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 we know we have two oysters sitting because we did yeah. not test, so we want to go straight down the middle of those, so I'm not going to damage those oysters. And lost the tail. And don't take the tail off your chicken. Just don't, don't, don't. Okay, cool. Now, we've got our roasting dish. Now I'm going to just wash my I'm hands. I must just say, I'm blown away by just the fact of how you dissecting this chicken, because that is an art on its own. I was watching a very good buddy of mine, Mike Wright, dissect the chicken into its different pieces and preparing some of those parts. It was an amazing watch, Clem, but the way you're doing this, it's a, it's a little bit unique and different, and yeah. I like how you're savoring everything in this chicken as well, so and nothing's going to waste. Talking about Mike Wright, man's a legend. He's also yeah. our social media manager at Espresso. Yeah, love man. him, love him <laughs> so much. Absolutely legend, okay, cool. And it's, it's kind of all practice. People are very intimidated by getting to the chicken and starting to do their things. Once you kind of like play around with it a few times, you're not gonna, you're not gonna destroy the chicken. Just work in it, see the anatomy. Use your, your like, a sense of like feeling where the bones mm, are. Mm. You're never gonna wanna cut through a bone. So if you feel a gap, chances are there's a joint there and it'll be easier just to slice through that. So use your senses. It's, it's, I got it's, you. It's all about you. practice actually. So yeah. what we're gonna do now is, give this knife a wash as well. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna only cook the chicken on one side, skin side up. And it works. This is how I did my chicken last night. This is how I always roast my chicken, so one side up. And by spatchcocking it, you created more surface area. So instead of cooking the chicken for an hour, it's like you're cooking chicken half now. the time. Yeah, okay. about half an hour, 35 minutes to 40 minutes, and you're actually good because okay. you've now expanded the chicken, making getting more contact with the heat. So first things first, and there's peppercorns in there because of the brine. I'm not going to take it out. Keep that in there, a little bit ah, of salt goes, nice. a little okay. bit of salt goes in Waste there. Waste not. A little bit of lemon at the bottom of the tray, a little bit of thyme. So what's gonna happen, right? When it roasts, you got heat coming from the bo bottom, heat coming from the top. So you're gonna get that nice crispy skin from the top of the chicken, and at the bottom, it's gonna get heated. The chicken's gonna get, the, first the lemons and thyme are gonna get that heat. It's gonna perfume the chicken, so you get all that flavor coming through from the bottom, crispy skin in the top. You do not turn the chicken over, you don't. Wow, what a combination. So Man. very quick, a little bit of oil, the only reason for the oil's gonna help that skin get a little brown, you can do butter. You can also stick some butter under the skin. The reason I'm putting extra butter on, because I want a little bit of salt, this time a little bit of flaky salt, that oil's gonna help it act as a glue. Oven, 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Boom, 180. Done. And you see the size of this tray. If you want to maneuver it properly, you can actually put two chickens in there, and I would. Yeah. I would, absolutely. Roast two chickens at a time, like I said. Tomorrow's lunch, tomorrow's next leftover dinner, the next day's lunch. Oh, two chickens at a time. Just in time, let's find out who's on the line. <sighs> Culinary Hotline Bling, how may I help you? This is Ryle speaking. Good morning, dear. I just want to find out from Chef Clem how to make Hong Kong chicken via um, the pot, not via the oven. Hong because Kong chicken. And may I ask chicken. who's calling? He's calling um, Rafika. He's speaking to Rafika. Rafika, it's an absolute pleasure okay. having you in the kitchen. Chef Clem is here to answer yes. you. So, Hong Kong chicken, there's no one recipe for Hong Kong chicken, but chicken recipes in Hong Kong genuinely have 
very, it's, it's chicken that's got very aromatic. It's ginger, it's garlic, there's um, chili on there. So those are the essence, and the, and the oyster, so, oysters, oyster, soyster, soyster, soy sauce makes yeah. it oyster. <laughs> oyster sauce, hoisin sauce, soy sauce, it's all those aromatic flavors that add umami to the chicken. So that's, a, that's where the flavor comes from. So I'm gonna be a little naughty, and I'm gonna use the ingredients that you can use at home to get like a uh, uh, Hong Kong inspired chicken, but we're gonna, we're gonna do something a bit naughty, okay? Because we, we need this on the fly now. We've got some fried chicken. We're gonna do like an Asian glazed fried chicken. Ooh, because we can! Okay. And it's gonna be really good. Okay, so I've got a pan on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with a little bit of oil. And the thing about, what I love about Asian recipes, they're not, they're not afraid to bring flavor through. Like, like I said, the spices, the, the yeah, chili. Make you know, it's you know what you eat it because it's so intense. Because the chili's in. Uh, so oil's in, what I'm gonna do is that I've got a bit of ginger and garlic chili sauce, chili going in, a little bit of honey going in, a bit of sauce, soy sauce going in. And we're gonna do this super quick. <laughs> Rafika's watching you with the bated breath as quickly as you can get this together. Chili, fermented Chili's chili next. sauce. And you can smell that, you can smell that so long. That's got like a... Oh, that's nice. That's okay, so we're balance. gonna mix this yeah. all through. Then we're gonna take our fried chicken and I'm going super quick. But that's the thing about Asian food. You can do everything so quickly when your Mason Plus is done. Things happen so quickly in the, in the kitchen. Okay, cool. Our chicken that we just fried goes in. We're gonna start glazing that in the sauce. Okay. It's gonna be so good. What you're gonna do now is not wear a shirt. You're gonna get, <laughs> you see it's bubbling? Give it, start giving it a little shake. Get fancy, get fancy. All right, I see you, I see you. Nice form, Clem. <laughs> don't wanna get, don't Woo! wanna get yeah, chili man. sauce on yeah, myself. Man. Make sure you get a nice bit of that glaze on there. This is honestly food that's gonna literally, it's gonna get your, you're gonna, you're gonna split that chili, you know, and you're gonna feel the back of your throat, you're gonna love it. This is chicken <laughs> that you are absolutely, you're not gonna have it every day, but you know what, today's a good day, make it. Today's a good day to go all the way to mainland China. Looks like you've kind of pretty much done with that, and I hope we, we have answered done. your question. Rafika, thank you so much for calling in. It's the culinary hotline, Bling. Another perfect addition. Chef Clem, you're always coming through with the magic. Thank you so much. I'm here with the response, <laughs> yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. All the answers, the conundrums, the clues, the questions, the solutions when it comes to fried chicken and not making it dry. You heard it here first on Expresso Show. Now, what else do you need to do? Go make some chicken, all right? <laughs>